Today, we're going to conduct a practical experiment to see how different launch angles affect the trajectory of a ball flying through the air. I'm Brogan Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now. And today, we're going to be using a 12.7 millimeter wiffle ball from the FTC Robotics Decode season. And we're going to see how you can change that launch angle uh, from a flywheel shooter and see how does this affect the different trajectory of a ball and if that even affects a wiffle ball compared to a standard ball. We're going to take my angled shooter design and we're going to run it all out from 80 degrees all the way down to 5 degrees, launching at a consistent 1400 RPM on a 12 volt 6000 RPM motor. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to see how you can change those different on launch angles and also get a pretty good judge on what launch angle might work for you and your robot. Taking a look at my testing setup here, I've got a pretty standard hooded shooter. I have a sheet of polycarbonate and some thick PCTG prints in the back, running with some standard plywood on a bare 6,000 motor and a 96 millimeter uh, 30A shore hardness uh, wheel. And then on this hood, I have the ability to have these notches at five millimeters, all the way from zero degrees, all the way up to 80 degrees. So we should be able to get a pretty good judge on catching different arc patterns coming out of this. Down in the testing setup, I have a 2 times 30 amp Roboclaw motor running on a 24 volt battery. I have a motor encoder plugged into this uh, bare motor, and I start all up with just a simple uh, time sleep program. Throughout the entire uh, test, the motor's going to be running about 1100 RPM. Let's start our max angle here out at 80 degrees. We'll come down to 75. We'll come down another five degrees. And we'll come down another five degrees. We'll come down another five degrees. We'll come to five more degrees. And we'll come down another five. We come down another five degrees. Let's come down another five degrees here. We'll 
We'll come down another five degrees. Come down another Come down five more. We're now at a five degree launch angle. Which is effectively straight up. So with all the testing out of the way, let's draw some arc patterns and see what happens here. Now, some of the fundamental concepts to understand is that we have changed one variable here. We've changed the hood angle. We've kept the RPM the exact same. And as we take a look through this data, one thing that we're going to see is that as we change that hood angle, we of course change the trajectory and the height at which our ball is able to shoot from. Now it's pretty clear right off the hop that some of these hood angles are just not gonna be possible. Like 70 degrees, there's just no way you're gonna be able to get this thing high enough to get it into that goal because that goal I believe is about a meter in height. So we need to be able to find an angle that has at least a meter of height and looks like 60 degrees is probably on that close end, but 55 is probably more what it is we're looking for. And you might want to consider it at a minimum hood angle, depending on how fast you're going. Now, of course, this is going to change a bit because you might change the RPM. I had a pretty consistent 1100-ish RPM for this test. So that is something you're going to have to consider uh, and that you might have to test on your own specific designs as well, depending also how much compression you have on that hood shooter too. As we start to get up to 50, we start getting quite a bit of clear. So 50 degree angles, we're getting almost 110 centimeters up and we're keeping that arc for quite a long time as well. That 55 degrees is a little close on this current design, but 50 gets us pretty close to that edge. 45 gets us even higher. And then as we start to hit 40, there's a pretty stark difference between 45's launching path and how far it will go, and 40 and how much it starts to actually arc. Now, as we come down to 35, I didn't actually test 35 here, so this is a predicted path based on the, uh, basically a split the middle between 40 and 30 degrees. So now you start getting into a bit more of these arching shots as you start bringing down some of these shots. And I would say that 10 degrees it's probably about the absolute minimum I would consider going because when we saw five degrees, it actually ends up catching your hand. So we look at these uh, overlaid on top of each other. We've got a 10 degree shot and a 70 degree shot. You can see that obviously the angle changes quite a bit on this test setup. And that's of course exactly as we'd expect when we plug these things into some different models for trajectory pathing. When we start getting that midpoint between those 10 and 70 degrees, try to get a bit of that arc. When we look at all these sort of lower angles, you might want to consider anything that gets you above 100 centimeters. In this case, anything of 50 degrees and lower is likely along those uh, testing lines, maybe 55. Again, depends on the speed at which your shooter is going. Uh, we start getting below that 35 range, we can start to start get these much more lobbing shots. And then if we were to overlay them all together, uh, this is some of that data that we get. So some things to think about is the more contact time you get on that hood, the faster that ball is going to be going. So down near the bottom section here, these balls, their velocity is likely traveling faster. 
than these balls velocity is. And we can see that just by how much hang time there is inside of those shots. Some things take a lot more in that shot as well, because you're getting far more contact area on top of that ball because we're contacting far more of that curved surface before it's able to actually launch itself up. So this comes down to some sort of decision whether your team decides to do a fixed angle shooter or some sort of variable angle shooter if you are shooting a hooded design in this test. When it comes to a fixed angle, it can be more, more challenging to be able to launch yourselves from different positions. And if you're going to choose a fixed angle hooder, it's a, it's a lot simpler to program because you don't have to have an adjusting hood design. It's also a lot easier perhaps mechanically because you just have one fixed position and you change the RPM of your flywheel instead to be able to speed the RPM up and speed the RPM down. Now that may or may not affect your ability to have higher throughput at different distances because the, uh, when your flywheels are going so fast, you have so much inertia, it can be harder to slow it down to the specific speed that you were looking your flywheel to actually hit on instead. So having a variable hood might allow you to be able to get up nice and close and fire shots, as well as getting far away and still be able to fire your shots. But of course, that comes with some different complexities. Although I think one thing that might get you the kind of uh, easy benefit is having a simple long shot and close shot. So you just have two fixed positions that your hood rotates between. It's also possible you can design up, say, two hooded shooters, and you have one hooded shooter that you can fall into when you're close, and one hooded shooter you fall into when you're really far away, depending on how it is you want to go about approaching these things. I think there's a lot of ways that teams can end up taking this. And I don't think, and I think it's still not clear at this point in the season whether having an adjustable hood or having a fixed hood angle and changing your RPM uh, on the flywheel is more beneficial or less beneficial. And what seems to me to be the case and will likely end up coming uh, down to it, it would, whichever design your team spends more time prototyping this season. So if you're spending more time working on it, changing your angle of your hood, or you're spending more time on a fixed hooded angle, and then you're changing the RPM, uh, whatever you're able to tune well for your specific robot inside of your specific team's needs is likely going to benefit you more. Because as usual, you always have to build within your team's means, and it's always a bit of a time crunch. If you want access to this hooded shooter so that you can build it yourself and then test your own angles and designs with your specific setup, you can access those CAD files by joining my community down below. I've also got a full tutorial on how you can assemble this. So hopefully this data gives you some pretty good thinking points and some thought points to be able to build yourself off of and think what kind of angles might be functional for our shooter, at least a starting test point. Other than that, I'm curious on your team's design for this season. Let me know in those comments down below and best of luck out there this season.